um, of the park being open to the public. It was in the 1800s, it was, or prior to the 1800s, it was um, wetland here naturally. And then it was converted to farmland in it was 1890s. It was converted to farmland. And then um, it was farmland for almost about 100 years. There were a few houses. Um, you can still, in certain areas, you can still see um, like uh, part, partial portions of uh, fences that were there or other uh, remains. We have some uh, like pear trees or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have a couple of pear trees somewhere up there. Um, so there are still, you know, a few pieces of evidence here and there of uh, when it was farmland. But basically, they removed all the tiles and everything in the uh, late 1900, 1989. I think the airport purchased the property because they were expanding for the McNamara Terminal at the airport, so or the Northwest Terminal. So they. Um, by law, they needed to replace the wetlands that were being destroyed. So they needed an area that was nearby in the same county and a large area where they could um, establish wetlands to replace the ones that were being destroyed. And you probably all noticed the nice landfill as you drove up, that nice big hill. Sometimes it's snow covered and I'm kind of thinking maybe it's a little mountain, but it's not, it's a landfill and the company wanted to expand the landfill and use this as landfill as well so when the airport approached the township to put a park here the uh, township was you know very excited to do that they didn't want the landfill to be there and we often get the question does the <coughs> landfill um, affect the park at all the quality of the water or anything because people fish here you can fish here you can take the fish home you can eat them um, the water's been tested and we've not found any um, contamination from the landfill. The landfill is east of us, the park. So even though we're right next to it, the landfill there, they're east. So everything flows, the water, groundwater flows southeast towards Lake Erie. So it's flowing in the opposite direction. So it's not actually coming into, even though it's right next to us, it's not coming this way, it's flowing the opposite way. So that's why we're not impacted by the water. Um, the smell, same thing. There's maybe a handful of times a year, five, six times per year, where you can smell the landfill. It always seems to be on those 90 degree hot days. But basically, it has to be when the wind is coming from the east, which is not you know that often. Usually, it's coming from the west or north. So um, we don't really smell it that often. So uh, at least the planning was was good on that part. We're not really impacted by the landfill at all, even though you. You see it, it's kind of an eyesore, but other than that, we're not really impacted at all by the quality of the water or anything like that. So the airport um, used this land. They, in 89, they purchased it, and then in, I think it was 91, 92, they were doing the construction, removing all the drainage tiles, um, putting in some of the native plants. Believe it or not, no animals were brought here. The only animals that were brought in were some turtles when they were in the wetland areas of the airport where they were gonna drain those wetlands, they were trying to find turtles. Some of the people were trying to find turtles, remove them and bring them here. So a lot of turtles were brought over, but other than that, nothing was brought over. The fish came over naturally. There were a couple of drains that fed into this area. So the fish were brought in, came in you know, on their own or from birds or whatever. Um, all the birds came in, the beavers came in on their own. Nothing was actually brought here except for plants that were, native plants were planted, but everything else came in on its own, so. Do you know what kind of fish we have carp, of course. There's um, black and brown bullhead. There are channel catfish, um, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, uh, crappie, bluegill. We have bluegill, um, pumpkin seed, green sunfish. Are there some perch in there too? It's not cold enough for perch, but we found one perch. There, we had one of those uh, fishing that we do with the DNR, they have their free fishing weekend, and I think it was two years ago, two or three years ago, one of the kids found, caught a yellow perch. Um, it's not not um, something we expected to find in the water here, so we're not really sure how um, it was here, but yeah, we had, we found one yellow perch. That's all we know of, but there may be more, but yeah, it's, it's not really cold enough. It's not deep enough. Um, most of the water is uh, between three and four feet deep, 
And then there are a few areas where it can be 18 to 20 where they dug large pits so that fish would have somewhere to go in the winter time where there'd be enough oxygen because you know the, the water if it freezes down if you have a really hard winter it freezes down three feet the fish are going to die um, so <laughs> by having those large deep pits they can go in there and there's plenty of oxygen so they can get through the winter so yeah there may be some more perch but um, it's not really cold enough to, to find them so we don't know how the ones survive